uh, including the Terminator. I think thought through time travel very Pretty hard. Well. On the, yeah, they, they did, did did all right. Yeah, uh, I have an issue. Wait, I, I have an issue um, with with Arnold. Um, uh, what is it? <laughs> Tell me. Tell me now. Why do you have a problem? So on the first, the, the, the first. <laughs> 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 I'll tell you, dude. The, the, he goes back in time to kill uh, the the possible parents of of, of the, John Connor, the, the leader of the of the new of the uh, movement of the resistance. But all he had to do is prevent his the parents from meeting each other. I mean, you, you can go back four generations earlier and just put two people on a different train so they never meet and that entire genetic lineage never exists, right? right? So this idea that he's gotta kill them and it's gonna be all bloody, that made it like a violent movie, but it could have been done a little more uh, with, with less blood and gore. Um, where was I? Oh, so here's what you have to be concerned about. Let's go to Back to the Future. When, uh, Mar Marty, yeah, G give me some Doc Brown here. Uh, Marty, it's Christmas time. <laughs> now, now I'm in the mood. Thank right. you. <laughs> All right, get in the car, Marty. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's Marty, and he's being chased by the Libyan terrorists. Okay, that's right. Um, that's right. And in the parking lot, in the Twin Pines parking lot. All right, and then he he he. he there's a date in there from 1955, and he goes back in time to 1955, okay? And he lands in the Twin Pines Ranch. Because as we know, all good farmland becomes strip malls, right, in modern times. All right, okay. Uh, what they didn't address is the fact that he would only land in that ranch if he goes back to when Earth was in the same place in its orbit. Ooh. He would have to be traveling on the anniversary of the date that he was that uh, of when he left, right. so that Earth is back where it is, so that when he goes back in time, he doesn't end up suffocating in the vacuum of space. Oh man, that first of all would be the best time travel short <laughs> film ever. <laughs> Oh, uh, Marty, I discovered the secrets of time travel, Marty. Right? Get in the car. <laughs> and then the and two of them are just floating in space. The end. The end. <laughs> I didn't think this through, Marty. <laughs> so you need, so, so I'm just saying, it's not good enough just to travel back in time. You need something to propel you in space as well. So it's a space time, a space time machine not just a time machine, because Earth is a moving target. I just want to make that clear. That's really cool, actually. And by the way, just you go back in time, you could still land on Earth, but how was Earth rotated? You could end up in Siberia, in the middle of the ocean, probably, because most of Earth's longitude is spanned by ocean. Um, so, so, I, so I just want to sort of, it's truth in time travel with regard to these space-time coordinates. Now, um, we call these, your, your coordinate in space and your coordinate in time, we call that your world line. Really? Yes, that's, I've a, never it's a cool term. Wor uh, world line. World so, line. So your world line is where and when you are. Nice. So you can step back and look at everyone's world lines. And the world lines are sort of, it's think of it as sort of some kind of shadow moving through this hyper coordinate system. And so that way, if I have to go to a, even a higher dimension so I can see your entire world line. If I see your entire world line, you are always being born, you're always living out your life, and you're always right. dying. Right. Because I can see the time see coordinate. Time line. Right. The, the, the whole timeline is there in front of me. Right. And I can see other people's world lines intersect your world line. Oh, that's when you met your wife. Okay? That's when you were in my office and we recorded that episode. Exactly. So, so imagine the spaghetti picture of all these world lines of human beings interacting. This is cool. And that I don't think, I don't, I don't know that anyone has actually thought to portray that. No, they have not. That's why I said this is so cool. Cause first of all, first I've ever heard of it. But secondly, that is something that nobody's put in sci-fi in terms of, actually, I take it back. There, There's a couple Star Trek episodes where they play with that, but they don't, present it that way they still present the linear uh as portrayed 
in different positions. Exactly. So anyhow, so that's that's how that works. And one last point in, in Kurt Vonnegut's novel, Slaughterhouse Five, which it ostensibly takes place in at the end of the Second World War, um, and there's, there are other sort of historical details I won't get into. What I was most intrigued by is the time travel that goes on in that, and he actually captures that accurately. So what happens is the lead protagonist gets abducted by aliens, gets put in a cage, and that sounds bad, but they said, no, you're still there, you're still being born, you're still dying, and they went outside of his timeline. And so he would sit there and daydream, but by daydreaming, he re was living his life and he could relive his life multiple exactly. ways and in multiple times. Wait, just real quick, because we're running out of time. Dr. Manhattan, I forgot also, is, the, is a character who lives in his world line and also sees his world line simultaneously. Okay, this is uh, uh, of the uh, Dr. Manhattan from uh, the Watchmen. Watchmen, correct. Yes, 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 excellent. Yeah, he's, that's a pretty powerful guy. Yeah, I mean, man. once you have him, what? Why have anything? Do anything? You know, that's about what anything. I don't like. That's why I don't like Watchmen. Believe it or not, <laughs> for what you just said, because it's like I got Doctor Manhattan. I mean, my We're done here. Er my answer to everything is like, seriously, bro. I got Doctor Manhattan. <laughs> yeah, that's the answer, Doctor Manhattan. Yeah, yeah. it's Doctor Manhattan. It's the over. whole the right. whole thing. So okay. now, one other quick thing. All right. Um, uh, if you have an ant in a in a square, okay, and let's say there's a sticky edge on the square. That's basically a prison for the ant. You could tell the ant, ant, just go up an inch and out and over. No, but the ant is stuck in two dimensions. The two dimensions of the paper that's at length and a, and, and a width, okay, or height or whatever. Those two dimensions, the ant is stuck. If he had access to the, if it had access to a third dimension, it could escape the prison, right? Right, because it could right. find height and escape, right. So think about it. If you are in an actual jail cell, and you had access to a fourth dimension, a fourth spatial dimension, you just have to step out of the spatial, into the spatial dimension and step back in and then you just walk out of the prison without ever touching the walls, okay? So that's how you escape prison, just invent a fourth spatial dimension to do that. So then I thought, if you need a spatial dimension for that, then what about our fourth time dimension? Why, why can't we, why can't that work for us the way a fourth spatial dimension, it does. It does, here it is, you ready? So somebody puts you in jail, and now you enter your fourth time dimension, you go to it, return to your time dimension before you were put in prison. Right. Now you're not in prison, you now just escape the prison. prison. And you do it or after you escape. Uh, so that it's, it works the same way as the spatial dimension if we can invent that. But I'm just that, that's all I gotta say about that. Yeah, a better thing would do would be to return to before you committed the crime and not commit it. Oh, Reverend Chuck, <laughs> <laughs> the moral, the, the, the moralist, Reverend Chuck. <laughs>